welcome to another video from explainingcomputers.com. This time it's a head-to-head -head between the RockPi X single board computer, which has got an x86664 processor, and the Raspberry Pi 4, which has got an ARM CPU. On each board I'm going to be running the same operating system, which is going to be Ubuntu 2010, and it'll therefore be very interesting to see which board comes out on top, the x86 base board or the ARM base board. And so, to start things off, let's have a very quick summary of the specification of the two boards. Right, here we have our Rock Pi X and our Raspberry Pi 4. Specifically, we have a 4GB Rock Pi X with 32GB of onboard flash storage on which Ubuntu 2010 is installed. And the Raspberry Pi 4 is a 4GB model fitted with a 32GB SanDisk Extreme Pro microSD card as its Ubuntu 2010 boot drive. As you can see, each board is fitted with a large passive heatsink. Most of the metal is on the top of the Pi because the processor is on the top whereas on the Rock Pi X, most of the metal is underneath because the processor is on the bottom of the Rock Pi X. And equipped as they are here, both of these boards have a street price of about $80. When it comes to the processor, both boards have a quad-core 64-bit CPU. However, that's where the similarities end, as the Rock Pi X has got an Intel Atom Z8350, which has a 1.44 GHz base frequency, bursting to 1.92 GHz, whilst the Raspberry Pi 4 has got a BCM2711 system on a chip with four ARM Cortex-A72 cores running at up to 1.5 GHz. In terms of other specifications, the Rock Pi X has got a single full-size HDMI connector, whilst the Raspberry Pi 4 has got twin micro HDMI connectors. This said, the Raspberry Pi 4 does win when it comes to USB ports, as it's got two USB 3 and two USB 2 ports, compared to one USB 3 and three USB 2 ports on the Rock Pi X. And as you can see, both boards also have a gigabit Ethernet socket. Elsewise, both boards have a 3.5mm audio jack, they've both got a 40-pin GPIO connector, and they're both powered via USB-C. So let's get both of these boards booted up and see how performance compares for these very similarly matched x86 and ARM single board computers. Greetings! Here we are on the Rock Pi X running Ubuntu 2010, otherwise known as Groovy Gorilla. Here is our Groovy Gorilla. Meanwhile, here we are running the same operating system on the Raspberry Pi 4, where the only difference is the Raspberry reflection in our wacky monkey's glasses. Both systems offer a pretty fluid and responsive desktop experience. For example, if we run up a web browser, there we go. You see that we have pretty similar performance, although the Raspberry Pi 4 was very slightly faster. Although I don't think we'll record this as a significant test result. However, there are significant differences between these systems. For example, if we just close down the, the web browser here, I'd note that I'm running both boards with an Ethernet connection to connect them to the internet. They've both got a wired network connection. And this is because here on the Rock Pi X, I cannot get Wi-Fi working. And this is consistent with my experience of my first review with the Rock Pi X a few months ago. Meanwhile, on the Raspberry Pi, Wi-Fi works fine. And if we wanted to, we could therefore switch to using Wi-Fi rather than Ethernet if we wanted to. Now, I'm sure back here on the Rock Pi X, it would be possible eventually, I guess, to uh, get Wi-Fi working. You can see, just to prove it to you here, it really isn't here at the moment. There must be some sort of driver available. And certainly Wi-Fi works fine on the Rock Pi X when running Windows 10. However, I think we can reasonably state that Linux driver support is better on the Raspberry Pi 4 than on the Rock Pi X. And if we go across to this results table, we'll record a win here for the Raspberry Pi. However, when it comes to software support more generally, things go in the opposite direction. So for example, if I go across to uh, Ubuntu software here and uh, run it up, this is where we can install software packages. And if I select, for example, art and design here on the uh, Rock Pi X, you'll see we have a lot of packages available. We've got a scroll bar there across there and we can uh, 
I can grab the scroll bar. Why is scroll bars such a ridiculous size these days? Anyway, if we scroll down here, you'll see we've got uh, more than two pages of results. And I'm showing you this because if we go across to the Raspberry Pi 4 and do a similar uh, thing, we go across, open up the software and open up uh, art and design, you'll see that we've got just one page of results, just 24 packages here, a lot fewer than we see on the Rock Pi X. And this reflects the fact that there's less desktop software available for computers with an ARM processor like a Raspberry Pi than there is for computers with an x86 processor like a Rock Pi X. And so if we go back to our table, we have to record a win here for the Rock Pi X in terms of the breadth of software available for the board. Right, here I am back again with the Groovy Gorilla on the Rock Pi X, where I thought we'd run a CPU test. And so I've installed on both boards Sysbench with the command sudo apt install Sysbench. And now if I run up a terminal, I've got one running over here, we'll run this Sysbench CPU test. And I've set this up to factor prime numbers to a value of 20,000. Threads equals four represents the fact there were four cores on both of these computers under test. Time equals zero means that time will not be constrained in this test. It'll run for as long as is necessary to execute 10,000 events. And we'll get a time in seconds at the end of a test with the machine with the lowest score being the winner. So let's run Sysbench like that. There it goes. Very exciting. Taking a little while. This should be a relatively fast test on both boards, but we will see. The Rock Pi is uh, still having a little think. And eventually, hopefully, we'll give us a result. Come on, oh, there we are. Uh, we've got a result of uh, 17.5 seconds to run this uh, Sysbench test running at uh, 10,000 events. So if we go across to the Raspberry Pi 4 and we run the same test, here we go. I doubt it'll take quite as long as that on the Raspberry Pi 4. We also see, oh, there we are, 4.3 seconds here on the Raspberry Pi 4. So that is clearly a very good result for the Raspberry Pi 4. The Raspberry Pi 4's modern ARM processor is outperforming the few-year-old x86 Atom processor on the Rock Pi X by about four times. This really is, I find, both a very surprising and impressive result for the Raspberry Pi 4. And it only makes me eager to run some more performance tests. Right, here on the Rock Pi X, I'm now going to run up the GNU Image Manipulation Program, or GIMP, do a real world test. There it is, I've installed it, of course, on both computers. And it'll come up in a second, it'll take a while. I should have done a test of how long it took to launch GIMP, shouldn't it? Because it's gonna be quite a long while, though, look at things, but uh, let's speed on through. No, no, it's getting there, it's getting there, Christopher. It'll get there in a second. And uh, there we are, we've got the package launched. And what I'm going to do is to go to File and New to do a new document. Default size is 1920, 1080. We'll use that. And I'm then going to go to Filters and Render and Lava down there. And we'll now bring up the Raspberry Pi 4, also running GIMP and Prime to run the Lava filter with default settings. And by the magic of filmmaking, we'll start them both off at exactly the same point in time. And I wonder which one will win here. Will we get a similar result to the Sysbench test or was that a particular aberration? And certainly things here do seem to be a lot closer. Yes, this race is a great deal closer indeed with the Rock Pi X winning on 16.0 seconds, very closely followed by the Raspberry Pi 4 on 17.3 seconds to complete applying the filter. So here we have a win for the Rock Pi X, but regardless, I think this result makes it very clear that if you want to compare the performance of two computers, you should never rely on just one test. Right, I thought we'd now test rendering performance in the Caden Live video editor. So here I am back on the Rock Pi X and I've run up Caden Live, which of course I've also installed, had to do that first. And I've created a very simple edit with just one 10 second clip of some ducks. There we are, we'd like to see our ducks here on explaining computers. And I've set up in rendering a script to render this out. If I go to render, and there we are, there's the script. So we'll start the script here on the Rock Pi X. 
and this will give us a time for completion, so we'll speed on through till it's completed. Here we are, just coming to an end now, and the Rock Pi X has taken, wait for it, it'll tell us in a second. Come on computer, there we are, it's taken 35 seconds to render out this 10 second HD clip here on the Rock Pi X. So, if we go across to the Raspberry Pi 4, and also bring up Caden Live, all set up to run the script, so let's start the script, rendering out exactly the same video test. And here we are coming to completion on the Pi 4. What's the Pi 4 going to do? Oh, the tension is killing me. 36 seconds, look at that. 36 seconds on the Raspberry Pi 4 compared to 35 on the Rock Pi X. So very, very similar performance doing this real world task of rendering out a video clip. So I'm going to declare this particular test a tie. Guess what? Here I am back again to show you a few more things. And the first is going to be the system monitor running here on the Rock Pi X, but also on the Raspberry Pi 4, just so you can see the kind of resources being used on both systems running along pretty much at idle. They're both using about the same amount of system memory as you can see. Since I saw you last, I've also been testing 1080p YouTube playback here in Firefox in Ubuntu 2010. And as this split screen comparison indicates, both boards deliver a passable, if not stunning, streaming media video performance, if with the Pi dropping around 50% more frames. This said, Ubuntu 2010 is not optimized for browser-based video playback for either board, so this is not really a fair reflection of potential performance. And indeed, the Rock Pi X provided much better 1080p YouTube playback in Windows 10, as we can see in this clip from my original review of the board. Meanwhile, YouTube playback on the Raspberry Pi 4 is now finally pretty good indeed in the December 2020 version of Raspberry Pi OS, as this last clip demonstrates. And so, I think it's reasonable to declare browser-based YouTube playback as another tie, if noting that in Ubuntu 2010, the Rock Pi X does have slightly better performance. In this video, we've shown that an ARM-based single-board computer like a Raspberry Pi 4 can very much hold its own against an x86-based board like a Rock Pi X at the same price point. And to me at least, that's very surprising, because when I set out to make this video, my expectation was that the Rock Pi X with its Intel Atom processor would blow the Raspberry Pi out of the water on all of the performance tests. And clearly, this hasn't been the case. And what I think we can conclude therefore on this is the only reason to buy a Rock Pi X, and it can be a very good reason, is if you want to run x86 based software, either in Linux or in Windows. But elsewise, the Raspberry Pi is just as good a board in terms of its actual performance, and it's got an ARM processor, not an x86 processor. And I guess a lot of people, myself very much included, still have a mental model where we go x86 based processors much more powerful than ARM based processors. And this is changing. We know it's changing with Apple now having ARM-based processors, the M1 and its latest Macs, which are competing very well against comparable Intel chips in, in older Macs. So the world of computing, the wonderful world of computing, is at a point of transition with the increasing rise of the ARM processor. But now that's it for another video. If you've enjoyed what you see there, please press that like button. If you haven't subscribed, Please subscribe, and I hope to talk to you again very soon.